and uh, I'm here at the stand with Frequentis and Altitude Angel demonstrating our integration between UTM and ATM. Um, for Altitude Angel, that means three things. The first is situational awareness. So over here on the screen, we have uh, Frankfurt Airport uh, with a simulated radar feed. Uh, and in that simulated radar feed, we also have a number of simulated drones. So you can see here, we have a drone here, uh, and that's currently outside controlled airspace. Um, and so that drone uh, is green because it's doing good things. But over here, uh, we have a drone that's currently in, inside the controlled airspace, but doesn't have a flight plan. And so that drone is currently red. Um, but as that, uh, that drone flies out of controlled airspace, uh, you will see um, as part of this demo, you see that, that drone go green. Um, and the reason for that is we believe a, a big part of what UTM is about is bringing together multiple surveillance um, and telemetry sensors, uh, bringing together a single picture of what's going on in the air, knowing there's a thing in the air there, and then crucially, understanding whether or not that thing in the air is supposed to be there or not, and combining that with our, our flight rules and flight authorization system. And that brings me to the next part. So what we've set up for, this, for the demo here um, is we've created a rule around uh, the Frankfurt controlled airspace here um, that allows particular operators who are approved to uh, submit flight plans and have them automatically approved. Uh, uh, but also when they enter the airspace, when those operators request access to the airspace, uh, that has to be approved by air traffic control on a frequented smart strip system. So let's go through the process of that right now. Uh, here I have uh, an iPad uh, with the Guardian application installed on it. And again, we're looking at Frankfurt Airport. Let's imagine uh, that I'm doing an, uh, an on-airfield inspection, um, uh, maybe a threshold inspection, something like that. So let's submit a flight plan uh, somewhere on the airfield. As I said before, we have a rules already set up uh, that uh, the operator I'm signed into this application as um, has permission to submit flight plans automatically. Um, it warns me that I'm obviously in the controlled airspace of Frankfurt Airport. And now I need to fill some details in about that flight. Um, so when am I flying? I'm going to fly now. How long am I flying? Is this a commercial flight? Yes, I'm inspecting the runway. Um, let's uh, fill some details in here about that flight. And again, that's to help the situational awareness before the flight to understand what the intent of the flight was. Um, and then I fill in a mobile number here uh, to understand uh, uh, so that we can enable some of the communication scenarios uh, that we have uh, during the demo. And then finally, uh, we have some details about the drone. Now, normally this would come from a drone registration system. Uh, so it'd be serial numbers or ICAO numbers, something like that, about the telemetry that the drone was going to be uh, giving off. But for the purposes of the demo, we have that information in the app. So when I create a flight report, as I said, our rules should automatically give us approval for that flight. There we go, our flight plan is approved. And then if we go back over here to our situational awareness display, you can see that that flight plan has now been uh, put onto uh, the display. And over here, we also have the details of that flight plan with my pilot name and that phone number that I just entered into that flight plan. So I've submitted the plan for flight. Next thing to do is to actually get going and enter the airspace. So let's go back to the iPad here and manage my flight reports. So I'll go to that flight report and I'm going to manage it. There we go, and I'm going to start a flight. Again, we reconfirm that uh, mobile number uh, because sometimes you can have a different operator flying the flight from planning the flight. And let's enter that airspace. And as I said, the rule at the moment, there we go. The rule is that we, we actually need to get permission from the flight strip system, so our permission is pending. We don't currently have permission for that flight. So let's go over to the smart strip system over here. So you can see on the flight smart strip system, uh, we have a, a strip that has appeared. Um, that strip has an ID on it um, uh, and a number of buttons that enables me to uh, approve or decline that flight. Um, and over here on the iPad, you can see the ID on the strip and the ID on uh, the iPad matches. And over on the situational awareness display, you can also see that the telemetry for the drone has started as well because we've started that flight. And the ID for that drone 
and the ID for the strip and the ID for the flight all match up. And this helps kind of connect all the dots um, with the flight that's going on. So if we go back to the smart stretch system, let's approve that flight. So to do that, all I need to do, press on the tick, that moves into our accepted UAVs panel, and now that flight is accepted. And you can see on the iPad, we also have a pop-up notification saying permission granted for that flight. So if we go back to the situational awareness display, you can see here uh, that the drone is actually, because it's currently flying outside its flight plan, it's gone yellow. Um, and so that means it's, whilst it might have permission to fly, it's out of uh, the conditions that have been set as part of that flight plan. Um, and so it's turning yellow. When that drone, uh, because this is a simulated radar feed, when that drone flies into that flight area, uh, that drone would go green again. The next part um, uh, of what we can uh, show you here as well is um, we actually have the ability for air traffic controllers to send commands uh, to that drone digitally rather than by voice as they would uh, normally do. Um, and that again, we do go on the smart strip system. So let's imagine this scenario an air traffic controller would like the, uh, the drone to hold where it is. Maybe there's an aircraft going across a taxiway or something like that and it needs to hold its position. Over on the smart strip system here, we have a number of buttons that enable us uh, to send those commands to the drone operator. Um, so for the hold, uh, let's press the hold button here. That hold button latches to orange, saying uh, I have sent a command to the drone operator. And then over on the iPad, in just a moment, we should get a notification here saying, yes, you have been instructed by your flight approver to hold. If I press that notification, you can see I get to um, uh, a screen that en enables us to say um, whether or not accept or uh, reject that instruction. In this case, I'm going to accept the instruction. That sends our response back to the flight controller, to air traffic control. Our strip over here turns green. Um, and similarly, in the situational awareness display, if we were, um, uh, if we were green in the, in the flight plan, uh, we, would, uh, we would go yellow during the instruction, and then uh, we would go green again uh, when we accepted that instruction. Or we would stay yellow if that instruction was rejected. So the final part of this scenario actually is as part of the uh, flight planning process, uh, when the strip came through to the flight controller, um, that mobile number that we entered into the iPad right at the beginning also flowed through to the flight strip. And so that also means on the flight strip, even if um, the digital instructions aren't uh, sufficient, we can actually have a voice conversation with that drone pilot too. And to do that, all we need to do is press the dial button on the strip. When I do that, the Frequentis BCS system kicks off. I can pick up the phone, accept the call, and be in contact with that drone operator and, uh, and, and ask more details about the flight.